Turks are essentially one of the most successful examples of colonization originating from Asia, and I'm not just referring to the Ottoman Empire. The Turkic people started as a small tribe originating in northern Asia, or Siberia, and are inextricably linked with the other inner Asian group of the Mongols, a tie formed through migration, trade, conquest, and intermarriage, and the early cultures and societies of these two groups were actually quite similar, although whether they descend from a common people and language is up for debate, and will be a question I explore in an upcoming video. They have had an extensive history of invading both Eastern and Western Eurasia, especially the region of Central Asia, and after the devastation wrought by the Mongols on the Indo-Europeans of the steppe, such as the Scythians, Tokarians, Bactrians, and Sogdians, Turkic tribes began to migrate en masse, becoming the dominant culture and absorbing, though not entirely eliminating the previous peoples, creating a hybrid society that became homogenized somewhat over many, many generations. Through even further invasions from Central Asia, the Turkic people known as the Seljuks conquered a large portion of the Middle East, assimilating various groups in Anatolia, creating yet another hybrid population, though by this point the original North Asian genes and culture were greatly diluted. Think of them as the Latinos of Asia. Yeah, I know I already called Indians the Latinos of Asia, but this probably fits better. The Turkic people are extremely unique among ethno-linguistic macro groups as although they do share a certain degree of ancestry and genetics, it's nowhere near the level of other groups surrounding them, and because of their vast geographic area of conquest, their descendants now have a wide degree of admixture from various races and ethnicities, leading to the vast plethora of phenotypes visible in what one would call the Turkic people. Another example of this would be the Austronesians, who also have a large degree of diversity in appearance due to intermixing with Papans in the Pacific region and Africans on the island of Madagascar. There are six main distinct genetic and cultural clusters among Turkic-speaking peoples, with perhaps the most famous, the Turks, being a part of the Anatolian or Middle Eastern cluster, so they are predominantly the result of Turkified Anatolians, Greeks, Caucasians, and Armenians, with significant intermixing with surrounding Iranian and Arab populations. The neighboring Azeris fell under Russian, later Soviet control after a war with the Persians, and the Turks and Azeris really do consider themselves to be blood brothers in the region of Southwest Asia, with their cultures and languages being extremely similar, albeit with Azeris having more Iranian influence. After the fall of the Ottoman Empire, the bulk of Turks were repatriated to Anatolia, along with a surprisingly high number of Muslims from Albanian, Greek, Slavic, or even Romanian backgrounds, with most assimilating into the populace within a generation or so, greatly contributing to population growth and development. Another cluster would be the Turkic people located in the Caucasus mountain region, excluding the Aziris, and includes the Kumiks, Karachay, and Balkars, being the descendants from previous Turkic dynasties in the region such as the Kipchaks, and similarly to the Anatolian Turks, have little admixture from the original Turkic migrants. Nearby in Europe, there is the Turkic-speaking Gagauz people in Moldova and Ukraine, who may not even be descended from Turks at all, but a Turkified Balkan population, as genetically they are extremely similar to Bulgarian and other South Slavs, but their culture has still been heavily influenced by the Ottoman rule. The second largest cluster would be the Central Asian Division, including all of the Stan countries formerly under Soviet rule except Tajikistan, and would also include the Uyghurs of the Chinese province Xinjiang. These Turkic people had the highest variation in appearance, having been the result of mass assimilation of many different groups inhabiting Central Asia before them. Next are the Turkic people located in the Volga or Ural region, somewhere near the border of Europe and Asia, and are perhaps intermediate in admixture between the Central Asian and Middle Eastern Turks, including the Tatars, Bashkirs, and Chuvash. Lastly would be the Siberian or Northeast Division, including the Tuvans, Altai, and Yakuts in Russia, and these are the purest example of the original Turkic people, inhabiting the same region that their ancestors did before the expansion into the rest of Eurasia. If we were to split the genetics of these various people into only two components, 
Western and Eastern Eurasian ancestry, it becomes very clear to see the genetic diversity of Turkic groups, with Eastern Eurasian DNA peaking in the areas closest to the original Turkic homeland, with the Yakuts and Tuvans being 89 and 84% Eastern Eurasian respectively, becoming more mixed in Central Asia, with Uzbeks, Kazakhs, and Uyghurs being 42, 63, and 52% Eastern Eurasian, following significantly in the Anatolian grouping, with Turks only having 9% Eastern Eurasian admixture and being nearly non-existent in the Gagaus of Europe, showing how their bloodlines become diluted over distance. Interestingly, if we were to combine all the Turkic peoples into a single gene pool, only around 27% of their genes would be Eastern Eurasian in origin, meaning the Turkic people today are a bit less Turkic than you might think. This is only a dichotomous genetic breakdown, however, and if we wanted to, we could go into even further detail for different regions, as again, Turkic peoples are one of the most genetically diverse ethno-linguistic groups out there, not even close to having a homogenized gene pool or specific haplogroup. Now, keep in mind, there are also tens of millions of people with Turkic ancestry throughout the Arab world due to the Ottoman colonists, especially in the Levant and North Africa, although the vast majority of these communities no longer speak Turkish, with a few exceptions, and are almost entirely assimilated into the Arabic-speaking communities, so we wouldn't be able to include them in a pan-Turkic country. So, why would these Turkic peoples want to unite under a single country anyways? Pan-Turkism dates back to the late 1800s, with the Ottomans having ambitions of uniting the entire Turkic world, which would involve acquiring Turkic territories held by Persia and Russia, and even following the devolution of the Ottoman Empire when Turkey was the only independent Turkic territory, there was still a push for integration with other Turkic peoples due to their shared heritage, culture to a certain extent, and possibly most importantly their Islamic faith. Although Turkic countries are relatively far less religious when compared to other Muslim groups, and not all Turkic people are Islamic. So, looking at a map of where Turkic people are a majority today, the logistics of connecting such a disheveled group of territories would be difficult, to say the least. But we can include the bulk of Anatolia, excluding the Kurdish region in the southeast, connecting it with the Azeri-inhabited region of Iran and Azerbaijan itself. And we're being pretty lenient here with the enclaves to include as much Turkic territory as possible. The other half would be the Central Asian regions, excluding the northern portion of Kazakhstan, mostly inhabited by Russians, and this would extend to include northern Afghanistan of ethnic Turkmen and Uzbek origin, and it's worth noting that the Persian-speaking Hazaras of Afghanistan have a huge amount of Turkic influence on their genetics and language, although are not considered a Turkic group. The Tatars, Bashkirs, and Chuvash of Russia would form the second largest enclave after the massive territory of Saka or Yakutsk inhabited by the northernmost Turkic group, although relatively few people live in this frozen Siberian tundra. This is the greatest extent of what can accurately be called the Turkic world today, having a land area of 3.4 million square miles, or 8.9 million square kilometers, slightly larger than Brazil, but smaller than the United States, with a GDP of $4 trillion, about the same per capita income as China or Argentina, and a population of 185 million people, so definitely a lower population density than most, as although some regions such as western Anatolia or southern Uzbekistan are quite populous, other areas such as Kazakhstan and Yakutsk are nearly barren. Overall, about 84% of the population would belong to a Turkic ethnic group, but that's practically meaningless considering the extreme diversity between groups we discussed earlier. So by breaking it down, we can see that Anatolian Turks are the largest division, followed by Central Asian and Volga Turks. The largest non-Turkic minorities would be the plethora of Slavic and other European groups living in Turkey, who are mostly Islamic refugees fleeing the Balkans, and in Central Asia, who are the descendants of old settlers or the result of state-enforced resettlement programs during the Soviet era, with Central Asia being the dumping ground for many groups such as Germans, Ukrainians, Koreans, Kalmyks, and other political dissidents. There would also be a large Han Chinese minority located predominantly in the Uyghur region, who again are descendants of much older migrants and more recent state-sponsored migration by the PRC government, much to the chagrin of local Turkic nationalists who wish to gain independence. 
The largest languages spoken would be Turkish, at around a third of the populace, followed by Uzbek, Aziri, Kazakh, a plethora of smaller Turkic languages, with the largest non-Turkic languages spoken being Russian, Mandarin, and Kurdish. And interestingly, many Turkic languages such as Turkic and Aziri, or Kazakh and Kyrgyz, have varying but high degrees of mutual intelligibility. In terms of religion, 82% would be practitioners of Islam, mostly Sunni, but with a large Shia population among ethnic Aziris. And as mentioned, most, but not all, Turkic groups are Islamic, with noteworthy exceptions being the Chuvash, Yakuts, and Gagaus, who are overwhelmingly Orthodox Christians, who would make up around 5% of Turkestan's population, and the Tuvans in Russia, bordering Mongolia, who are mostly Buddhist, no doubt due to the high amount of influence from the Mongols. A moderate amount, about 10%, would be irreligious. Not very high, but quite exceptional among the Muslim world, and similar to other regions of the world, many of the religious practitioners are merely nominal adherents, and excluding them would drop the religious segment by quite a lot. If you want to turn this video into a Turkish wank, we could also include all of Turkey, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, and other areas of Bulgaria, Russia, Romania, and Iran that were historically dominated by Turks. In this scenario, the two main Turkic realms of Anatolia and Central Asia would finally be connected with a single Turkic-based pan language implemented throughout the empire and the Caspian Sea would be renamed the Turkish Sea and the Black Sea would be renamed the Lake of Ataturk. But that's only if we want to turn this into an alternate history Turkish wank. And perhaps in about 40 years, Germany can be annexed as the westernmost province of this greater Turkestan. Ah, just kidding, of course. If we were being realistic, the most likely scenario would be the unification of the Central Asian Turkic countries of Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. Not under a united empire or country, but a supranational organization. The likelihood of any sort of political unification between these nations is currently quite low, and the chances of unification of the entire Turkic world even lower, but it's a fascinating scenario nonetheless, and a fun exercise in exploring the origins and cultures of the various Turkic peoples. So please let me know your thoughts on a united pan-Turkic world, and for today's poll let me know which Turkic empire you would like to know more about, as there are honestly way too many to go over in this video. And as always, thank you all for watching. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.